Hey guys, today I figured we'd do a cool thing on the channel and start a new series where we go through Hogwarts Legacy and just simply explore the castle. Um, we'll do this in a whole bunch of phases because obviously we could be doing this for hours on end. The game is enormous. There's so much detail put into this. I am so impressed. Um, with the world design in this game. Um, later on, we'll probably do an in-depth discussion about the game itself, but right now I wanna focus on the world building um, and the design of the game itself. So today, we're going to start where you would start uh, if you were to arrive as a first year at Hogwarts, and that is the boathouse. Uh, and we will be going through just the Great Hall uh, and maybe the Grand Staircase if we have enough time today. But uh, this is my character. I'm a Slytherin, um, and it is just ending the rain for the day. Uh, we're looking out on the Black Lake here. Um, this is a viaduct not connected to the castle, but the Hogwarts Express does go across that. Looking over across the Black Lake, way in the background there behind this big rock is the island of the White Tomb where Dumbledore uh, is buried later on. This game takes place in the 1880s, I believe. So this is even before um, the birth of Dumbledore, if I have those dates correct. Um, but definitely takes place before any of the staff members that we know at Hogwarts are there. So this is the boathouse that appears in the films. Now, a lot of the castle design is going to be based on what we see in the film, specifically the later films. But one thing that's interesting um, is that in the books, this boathouse uh, does not appear outside the castle. They actually park the boats inside uh, the castle underneath kind of an alcove beneath the Great Hall. Now, the interesting thing about this game is that both of those exist. So we have this external boathouse here, but then we have the boathouse that the first years actually do arrive at um, underneath the castle in kind of this underground water cave. So there's a bunch of different doors here. Um, I won't do much of the exploring for you guys. This is mostly just gonna be a world building example um, or a world exploring example, but just to show you what happens when you interact with some of these statues. Uh, I believe this is Confringo. Uh, you get to explore and get some of these field guide collected pages around Hogwarts here. This is basically just canoes. Uh, I haven't figured out whether or not you can use them yet. You can swim in the game, um, but I haven't figured out how to use vehicles quite yet, if there is the ability to use those. But uh, looking out here over the, I believe that's the northern side of the castle. Up there is going to be the greenhouses, um, the, the central tower area, the astronomy tower back there. And then you see the great staircase tower behind my character. We're going to now climb the stairs um, you have the ability to travel by flu powder throughout the castle, uh, but in terms of exploring today, I figured we just walk. So I will narrate our long, long hike up these stairs here. Like I mentioned, I'm very impressed with the world design of this game. You can tell they put a lot of effort into making very, like, distinct landmarks in the castle. They make the castle feel like um, one consistent building, however, each section of the castle uh, feels very distinct. And you'll notice that in some of the hallways, some of the wall designs, some of the column designs. And as we explore in this series where we do um, more than just the Great Hall for today, uh, then you will notice things like that. But we're getting to the top here, uh, just kind of zigzags its way as it does in the film design. And we will come up here to the bottom of the Great Hall Courtyard. Go through these gates. Most doors will open for you. You'll notice that there are things that are blocked off. Um, before we go into the courtyard, I'm going to go down here. Uh, some of these, what do you want to call them? Side walkways, I guess, uh, or just exploratory points. Um, you'll see a lot of these. Uh, this is just a, a little game you can play where you cast Lumos and it gives you a hint on where to find a missing puzzle piece to attach that missing puzzle piece back uh, and get a prize. This is that underground harbor I was talking about. Uh, the location is on the, what would that be, the western side of the Great Hall Courtyard below. Uh, it's going to take us down below. And you'll see this is actually where the first years are going to arrive with Hagrid. Um, out there is the Black Lake. There's a little kind of alcove that, that comes in. Not a ton of, I mean, there's a ton of detail everywhere in this game. 
um, but not a ton of things to really explore in here. Some chests that you can find, um, but you look around, it's going to be more decorative canoe type stuff, uh, chests that you can dig into. My inventory is full, so it's not going to give me anything, but very cool set design. You'll see owls everywhere in this game. Is that a real owl or a statue? That is a statue. But there are real owls that just follow you everywhere in this game. Uh, but we will go back then up to the the viaduct court or uh, the viaduct courtyard. I've been told that I say the word viaduct wrong. Um, I've always said viaduct, but apparently that's incorrect. So it'll load us back up here, and you'll see a lot of these walkways here gather all around. Um, this pathway leads up to the quad, uh, and this obviously is the viaduct there leading to uh, Central Hall and the Library Annex, and then things like the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower, uh, the Astronomy Tower, that sort of thing that we will explore in a later video. There are significantly more bridges in this game than there are in the films, which I think is perfect. I think that's a great world-building um, device there, and I do apologize if my screen is a little laggy um, but like I said, those stairs will lead up to the backside of the entrance courtyard, but we will go up to the main entrance. Now in the seventh and eighth films, if you're familiar, um, it might just be the eighth film, but for sure, Deathly Hallows part two, there is a bridge that extends out from the end of this courtyard. Uh, you'll see like the Malfoys enter from it. It doesn't exist in the books and it doesn't exist in the other films and therefore they did not include it in these games. You'll see way behind me there, that's Hogsmeade Village. So it's quite a trek unless, like I said, you have that flu powder network connected already as I do. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this already, but there are going to be doorways in here uh, that you will be unable to explore, or I'm able, I'm unable to explore right now. They have a what's called a level one lock on them, and in order to get through them, you have to learn Alohomora. And my character right now, excuse me, right now is not um, able to use Alohomora, and so I will not be able to show you. But perhaps at a later date, I will. This is that entrance courtyard. Uh, this is where in Deathly Hallows Part Eight, the film, or Part Eight, Deathly Hallows Part Two, the eighth film. Uh, Dumbledore, or Voldemort and Harry have their final battle. Then, of course, you go through here. Now, you're expecting the Great Hall to be immediately on the other side of these doors. That is not the case. Um, they do have the entrance hall from the first film as the first thing you see when you enter. Um, and we will come back here. There are a load of these locks that I mentioned um, and some more puzzle pieces. You have to find some keys and trap them against these to get some more puzzle pieces. Instead of going straight into the Great Hall, we're going to take a dip to the right here. This door opens um, to the basement. And you'll see a lot of these paintings do in fact move, some of them slower than others. Uh, but we go down this staircase here and this will lead us to the kitchens. Nope, I apologize. This is an entrance to the dungeons. So, um, another chest. There is an entrance to the kitchens that we will find later on, but let's just follow my right shoulder here. Um, I mentioned the world building design. All of these columns, or specifically the ones back there, uh, these lanterns have snake designs. So you can obviously tell we're in the Slytherin area. Um, this is one of the bathrooms. And I haven't found any Easter eggs in the bathrooms um, besides like a lot of the toilets explode and you can pull them to flush them. Uh, but if you flush them all at the same time, nothing major happens or at least none that I have found. Um, and I also haven't found the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets yet. But eventually, hopefully, we will get there. More bathroom stalls here. Uh, obviously green for Slytherin. We will exit out here. There's another bathroom, exact, uh, almost exact same design on the other side here. Um, but let's follow the walls down below. Keep following my right shoulder there. Um, and if you go up in this direction, where are we now? This is going to lead us up to uh, 
one of the bridges that I mentioned earlier. So uh, let's stay in this side of the building here. This is contained in the Slytherin dungeon. Um, now the entrance to the Slytherin common room is always tricky for me to find. Uh, you're going to come across a snake on the floor. And when we get there, I will point it out to you. Um, let's just keep following my right shoulder, my right shoulder. This door leads out to the Grand Staircase Tower, which we will explore in this video. But for now, stick to the dungeons. Um, I believe it's right here. The snake moves, as you see, and we enter through. And I love the design of the Slytherin common room in this game. It is so in-depth, so beyond what the films had to offer. Uh, you go down a very, very steep staircase until you're down below the Black Lake, and it is bigger than you could possibly imagine. We will do all of the other common rooms in time. Obviously, my character is a Slytherin, so he only has access to the Slytherin common room. Um, but you see uh, just kind of an entrance pond with a waterfall there, uh, bulletin board, and now you hang to the right, and I believe this is what was implied in the film of the Chamber of Secrets when Harry and Ron are impersonating Crab and Goyle to enter the common room. You have massive windows here, uh, very Atlantean feel. You're underneath the Black Lake, very serpentine, very uh, mermaid-type aesthetic. Um, you can interact with some of these characters, especially early on. Um, occasionally you'll see like mer people swimming through these windows here. Here's a look back up from this lower cavern, uh, and we will follow out here. Um, if you click your L3 button, uh, you are able to sprint or jog depending on where you are. This will lead, oh, I'm not allowed up there. So that's off limits. Follow up here. Like I said, my right shoulder is what we will be following. And this is also off limits. That means if the stairs are tilting, that means that is girls' dormitories. So we're not allowed in there. Um, these will lead up to just kind of hangout spots. I, what is this here? This is a dormitory. There's a lot of cool dormitory entrances. Obviously, this is a Slytherin dormitory. Reading space. And did I see something in that painting? I'm going to do Revelio and see if there's anything I should be looking for. There's not. Um, but occasionally, the tapestries also move as well, which is accurate with book canon. I can't remember if the tapestries in the films are ever shown to move or not. Behind here is going to be more just chests to search for. Um, that one has a level 2 lock on it, so I will have to do an immense amount of gameplay in order to get access to that. Um, up here, do I have access to this? Yes, that is another dormitory as well. Um, but the cool part about the dormitories, I think, I'm guessing those are the 7th year dormitories. But if you go down this hallway here... Uh, very much a sewer feeling, almost Chamber of Secrets-esque, especially when Harry's following the Basilisk uh, through the tunnel, or excuse me, running away from the Basilisk in the tunnels. Um, but then to the side here, you have these ports that will be um, the dormitories here. And there's signs on the outside. That one says first years. Uh, the character in Hogwarts Legacy, you start as a fifth year. Uh, so this will be second year. Follow along this path, third year fourth year there, and then this right here is my dormitory um, with my owl, and you're able to like read your own mail there. So great design here. I love all of like the green elements and the underwater elements that are keeping intact with book canon, especially with it being underneath the Black Lake. You definitely feel like you're underwater with the coloration of the design and then, how do we exit here? If we go back up this main fountain, you'll notice random Easter eggs in the, the conversations that happen with fellow students or with teachers or with gargoyles that you pass. Back out here, you exit and the snake will collapse. 
and the door will disappear. So I believe that is the entirety of the Slytherin dungeons. Obviously, there's the potion dungeons as well that we will get to in a later video. But back up these stairs. This here, that's where we entered from. So what is this back here? Sorry if I'm moving a little fast for you. Um, these are the actual dungeon dungeons, and we don't have access to them. No access there. Okay. So, let's then go back up to the Great Hall. A lot of spiral staircases. You do get dizzy, especially if you're playing this at night or if you get headaches regularly. So I do apologize for my screen moving as fast as it is. We're back out in this entrance hall. I mentioned this is where the kids... Uh, it's a little different design, but it is in keeping with the book. Um, this is what the kids see when they enter in the first book, in the first film. Um, switching spells here. Like I said, I'm not going to do a ton of spells. Uh, but just to show you guys what happens if I do... Something like, um, oh, what's the spell they're looking for? I think it is Dis Levioso. Um, and I place that into my spells, and I cast it right there. It's going to give me another one of those puzzle pieces. And then the statue actually disappears, so you know when you've collected them. Back up to the top of the entrance hall. This is, of course, where... Um, that's one of those keys, by the way. So it is going to relocate itself to that chest at the bottom, and I will come back to fix that puzzle later. Um, that is a character I will need to talk to to get a quest later, um, but fairly accurate with keeping with the books and how the films set the design. You walk through here, and you're still not in the Great Hall. This is a hallway leading up uh, to go to the right. Uh, we'll come back to that. But you see this little piece of parchment that is occasionally... Um, dropping into appearance, I will hit Revelio, and it'll tell me a little bit about that statue there. I believe the right leads you down to the kitchens, and the left will lead you up to the grand staircase in general. Like I said, we will come back to that. This is the antechamber where they keep uh, all of the house points. Obviously, in the films, it is actually in the Great Hall itself. In the books, there is an antechamber. And then there's yet another anti-entrance chamber here. Um, and then you enter, and here we are, ready for it, the Great Hall. Um, so it is very book accurate, uh, slightly different from the films. I think the biggest one, this fireplace, I think in the films, is on this side, actually. There's also not a huge door leading outside. And the biggest difference is... Sorry, let me do Revelio one more time and collect. Where did it go? You guys did see that, didn't you? There it is. It's at the foot here. So obviously nobody's eating, so there aren't any students in here at this time of day. Um, but the feast... Oh, excuse me, I lied. It's just on this end of the table that I didn't see them. Kids are eating at the ends of the table. Uh, when there's not food on the tables, you will see... Um, these tapestries are more distinct. So obviously you have Ravenclaw's table here, Slytherin, uh, which is film accurate. Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. There is a balcony that we can get up to. Um, the thing I wanted to point out here, though, that's different from the films is that these tables are rounded. Um, so a slightly different design. It's slightly wider, and it's not as long as the film version. Gather around the right side here, just window type stuff. Now up ahead is one of the, the arithmancy puzzles. So you will come across these in the game. There are these locked doors. Obviously this one isn't locked now, but it will give you a puzzle like that. Um, and the way to solve this, if you're not able to find where, uh, there is an Easter egg where you have to find the math problem in order to figure out what these numbers mean. Instead of being one through 10, uh, from left to right, these animals represent the numbers 0 through 9. So in order to solve this puzzle, uh, you basically, this bottom one here, the double question mark um, is 0 plus 1 plus double question mark equals 4. So that would be 3 correlating to this Hydra three-headed snake creature here. So um, then you also have to solve the single question mark. 
and get that correct and then get the double question mark, you'd set it to the Hydra and then you'd be able to enter this door. Now there isn't anything of substance in them except for these chests, which you're able to get inventory items. Like I mentioned earlier though, my inventory is full. Let's go over here. I did see one more, oh, sorry. One more little Revelio scroll that I wanted to collect just while we're here. And now let's go up to, before we go outside, let's go up to the balcony. This is one of those already solved puzzle pieces with the keys. I've already done that one. This balcony, there are a couple chests that are locked. Um, this student is definitely feeling like Neville Longbottom right now, um, but there's nothing really of substance here, just more set design. And then you can look out over the balcony through here. Going back down these stairs now, and we are going to go outside to the right before tucking around and coming back in to check out the basement. Um, it is significant, the out, what am I trying to say here? The exterior of Hogwarts is very much uh, more expanded upon than in the films. So there are gardens everywhere. Uh, it's not just a rocky hillside. This garden obviously doesn't exist in the films. Um, that is a door leading to the main quad. We won't go in there. We'll discover the quad in our next video, I believe. Um, but for now, just look around this garden here. Uh, all of these windows, and more specifically the windows at the bottom of the hill, you'll see when I tumble down these steps. This is the Hufflepuff common room that is immediately below us. So architecturally, um, you'll see these windows. Inside there, underneath this garden, is the Hufflepuff common room. Now, that is the Great Hall there. You'll notice the design is slightly different. It's more rounded than it is in the films. There's the Grand Staircase Tower with the Headmaster's Tower up top. And then, of course, the Quad Towers, Gryffindor Tower, um, the Hospital Wing there leading to the... Um, you can't really see it. That's the clock tower courtyard and then the wooden bridge beyond that leading down to things like Hagrid's hut and the towns that are south. Um, there are, in fact, towns south. And that is not Hagrid's hut. That is an additional hut that doesn't exist in film or book canon. There, I mentioned the White Tomb Island exists out in that direction there. But let's circle back around to the Great Hall. You can actually climb here um, or jump using your X or A button, like any other video game for the most part. Uh, climb here, same case. Back up to the top of this garden. And you'll see a lot of bugs and a lot of just world building items that you never would have thought about except for the fact that they put them in, which is fantastic. Some of these vines lead to uh, hidden doors, which you can use like Incendio or any of the fire spells to reveal. Um, this is in keeping with film canon, just this walkway on the exterior of the Great Hall. Here's more of that landscape. Um, one problem I have is sometimes these battlements or these ramparts are too big. Uh, where you really have to move your cursor to seek over or to, to peer over them. Just a slight issue that I have with kind of the design or, or it would be nice if there were like steps that I could step up onto and look out over instead of having to kind of crane my neck around to find what I'm looking for. Um, this is Filch's caretaker hut and I believe the entrance is going to be below this but I haven't been able to find it yet so I don't know if you're ever able to get in there um, obviously the great hall there and then you see that staircase kind of toward the end of this line on the right side that is the staircase we came up to get to um, the boathouse nothing down there it's just more um, kind of nooks and crannies ton of statues Stuff like that. We'll do Revelio in case they have one of those um, scrolls for us to find. And here's one of those. It usually tells you uh, what spell to cast in order to interact, whether it be a fire-based spell or any type of magic. Um, the icons on the spells themselves usually correlate with something on the statue. 
back down to the boathouse there. But I did want to show you the last thing we'll do in this video right now is go back in here and check out the kitchens before we do. Um, we'll do the grand staircase, I think, in the next video, just because there's so much to go off of here. Um, we're back in the entrance hall through here. Take a right. And when you're on the right side here, tuck left. And here's another one of those puzzles. Um, this The door is actually above here. So sometimes you really have to search for these extra spinning wheels. But you go down what is decorated very much like with foliage and, and garden type stuff. You definitely can tell you're in the Hufflepuff area here. Um, more chests to discover back there, or at least there used to be. Um, and then you're in the kitchens area. So very brick feel, very homely feel. Uh, I mentioned like each section of the castle feels very much its own thing. Moving paintings here. Now this painting is where you tickle the pear to get into the kitchens. Um, and I've already done that, so it's already opened for me. You enter here and you will see house elves everywhere. And I love the design of this place. You can pick up and eat anything you want. It doesn't affect anything health-wise. You just note that it's delicious. Uh, brick ovens here. Uh, there's a house elf working on something, squashing butterbeer or pumpkin juice or possibly both. Um, I haven't been able to find any real Easter eggs or puzzle pieces in here, just kegs of everything. House elf scrubbing. Obviously, this is long before Hermione's uh, house elf liberation front. Roasting the chicken or the turkey or whatever that is. Um, flies everywhere. Obviously, not that sanitary, but um, these are the house elf living quarters. Uh, I've already done the puzzle piece here uh, in order to find out what these are. It gives you kind of an explanation of what these are. But these little houses are where the uh, house elves sleep. And it's not explained uh, if they shrink or not, or if they just literally just fit in a barrel and fall asleep. Because uh, obviously you're seeing a house elf next to it, and the size differential is not phenomenal. All sorts of food on these middle tables here. And just with the design of these columns and these arches here, you can tell we're underground. You can tell we're beneath a castle or a church or something architecturally similar. Huge pot digging something or uh, boiling something. I'm not able to climb up there. You have to be the size of a house elf to do so. But then we are back to the main entrance and we will exit here. And just some more world building barrel type stuff here. Uh, this, I believe it's this stack of barrels is the entrance to the Hufflepuff common room. Um, obviously my character being a Slytherin, um, I should actually have access to the Hufflepuff common room, but I haven't figured out which spell to use in order to gain access. Uh, but that is how you enter there. We will discover that in a later episode. Hufflepuff just chilling. You're not able to, at least where I'm at in this game, you're not able to cast spells on your fellow students, which is a disappointment, but so be it. Now, one last thing we'll do in this video um, is when we're sticking to the right here, let's just go as far down as we can in the grand staircase. I think this will take us back to the dungeons. Um, very cool, they kept it circular. Um, which the films didn't always do, especially the early ones. It was more of a square tower. Um, but you have the ability then to go here into the dungeons. And now we are back in the Slytherin section. So that is all we will do for this video. Come back uh, next time and we will explore the Grand Staircase, the Quad, um, everything to do with the Gryffindor side of the castle. But for now, that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the channel to see more.